Yo, what up? This is Mike Brown, and this is The Art of Letting Go. What's up, man? (laughs) (laughs) What's going on, y'all? Today, we got a special guest in the building. I say that all the time, but you are a special guest. Um, Can you let the people know who you are? Hey, what's up, beautiful people? My name is Brandon Shamar Sanders, uh, a.k.a. Reverend Goodbody. (laughs) 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 <laughs> uh yeah man actor writer speaker um historian I, li- I like to call myself that now i would i would say that you are man my first time meeting you was at the black man now um all right yeah. shout out eric payton but yeah like just i, re- I remember you spoke it, it was either the first one or the second one. I just knew, like, I was like, man, this dude is deep. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, man. You, I, it, it was something, like, you were talking about something, and I remember you gave, like, just the analogy of, like, the Lion King and just, mm. it was deep, man. So I, had, I, 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 I knew I had to get you on the show at some point. For sure, for sure. You know, I love my analogies. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Movie historian, historian in general, black historian. Yeah, man. Um, man. So first, I, I wanted to talk about what you're doing with the Sunday socials um, at Agora, because I've I've only been a couple of times. But what what is a Sunday social exactly? So uh, Sunday social is basically a it's a group conversation. It's a safe space to talk about whatever that yeah. is in the realm of healing and love and support and different perspectives it's just an open space to like release and learn and understand uh we do it at agora temple which is on melrose avenue uh every sunday at two twenty-two yeah p.m um so yeah man um s- started off with just like two or three of us and since then it's grown to like we had like maybe thirty people two weeks ago. That's crazy. Yeah, man. It's been it's been great. That's what's up, man. Um, one of the things that y'all that we all talked about last week was uh balance and also like the the letting go of like people and not really letting go of people, but kind of just letting people like from your right. your past life kind of just be where they at. Right. And um yeah, I really wanted to talk to you about that because it's it's challenging to see, and it, and it's, but it's dope to see that so many of us are going through the same things. Because where are you from again? Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. And I'm from Texas. Oh, yeah. So, you know, just the perspectives of, you know, how we grew up to probably how we are today are mm-hmm. totally different. Mm-hmm. But we have so many people that are probably still in that past way of, of thinking. And I'm, I'm curious to know how do you, how do you deal with that as far as like interacting with family and friends and stuff from back home? Uh, for me, it's, it's about acceptance. Yeah. 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 Because you, you realize that you can only save yourself. So if you try to save somebody else, you're already missing the point. So they have to get to that place internally on their own. And in the meantime, you know, unconditional love is the energy to put out. Yeah. And not going to lie, man, sometimes it's it's tough because especially when you can see, you know, something that they could learn or uh, attach themselves to that will help them grow, but they're not there yet to receive yeah. it. Um, and, I, and I think the point for me has been to being able to release myself from not being affected by it anymore. Yeah. And even even just hearing you say that, it makes me feel like almost like we have to find that love and acceptance for ourselves first right. in order to really give it to other people. Because, you know, I look at my own life and I, I see points where I've been so critical of myself that it, it makes me do that with my family, do it with my friends. And right. almost like those parts of us that we don't like, we see them in other people. Right, yeah. right. And that's the thing we start trying to change them, but the reason why we see it is because maybe the universe is telling us we need to change us. Yeah, and yeah. That, and that's when that's when that work comes in, that internal work that a lot of people I see are afraid to do. Man, I used to be afraid of it, but it wasn't intentional fear. It's just how to, I, I guess, the way we. 
have been taught how to perceive life yeah has an effect on you putting the attention on yourself because you know we're from the south so religion is very strong yeah so the good source is coming from out here the bad source is coming from out here so whenever one is you know out of balance yeah we we, we look for the answer outside versus inside so yeah yeah I'm and I, I'm glad you mentioned religion because I'm curious to know um, what what do you practice, if anything, and and not that not that you have to, but I'm I'm curious to know just because I, I mean I grew up, you know, Christian uh, Methodist, and when I got into college, I started looking into like, uh, and not looking into it, but I was going to a Catholic school, so I started going to like Catholic church and. I mean, going from that to like last week, I went to a Buddhist temple. Nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and you know, you kind of you kind of taught like there's only one way, right? And I guess being out here, you start exploring other ways that mm-hmm. are out there. So I'm curious to know, like, like what your journey is like with that. Ooh, good question, man. Uh, so I grew up in deep south alabama so i grew up a baptist christian yeah uh and then as i got older and went to college uh went to a non-denomination christian church uh the same thing out here in la you know yeah the 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 new way the modern church where yeah <laughs> yeah nobody's wearing a robe or, you know the quiet <laughs> they got fedoras on yeah um, <laughs> But when I when I started my journey, I, I uh, still was trying to f- identify with something, and uh, each thing that I would learn, I could identify identify myself with. So I would learn about Buddhism and see the relation it had with Christianity. Yeah, I would read, you know, these old Hebrew texts and see how it related to the same thing I was learning over here. I would, you know, so uh, for me. I realized at the end, after all of that study searching, is that the thing that I was taught in school is what I practice. And my professor, shout out to Dr. Tommy Stewart, uh, she taught us the the art of being. Oh wow! Can you explain that a little more? The art of being is, and this is you know an acting technique. Yeah, but this acting technique isn't about you trying to become a performer, but it's about you being fully present in this moment and becoming whoever this character is. And in order to become this character, you have to fully fall in love with it. So it even just hit wow. me just now that yeah. man, that's all I can do in life is just be. Because as I be, I can fall in love and become everything that I experience and learn something from it. You know? What yeah. I mean? And so I don't throw any of the religions away if there's something in it that resonates with me that I can learn from. Right. I use it. If not, I don't use it, you know. So you kind of defining life for yourself and, you know, what what all of it means to you. That's pretty deep, man. Yeah, man. Uh, Because that keeps me open-minded. And I think that that's the whole point is to always expand. They say God is, you know, uh, infinite. Yeah. So we are that embodiment of that infinite energy. So we should always be continuing to grow. So if we get stuck at one spot, that that becomes stagnant energy. Uh, Energy has to, what's like that Duracell battery commercial? It just keeps going. (laughs) Going. (laughs) (laughs) I I like what you said about like, like just the art of being and like, fully in embodying that character and it makes me think about life in general and like shoot how the process of falling in love with the characters that we are Mm -hmm. you know and um it takes a lot of work man yeah it takes a whole lot of work yeah the uh the the best characters that i learned in theater to fall in love with were uh the villains okay because this was a big lesson I learned was when I had to play my first villain, I hated him because I hated what he stood for. Yeah. And my uh, my professor, uh, Brian Martin, what, he was showing me how well, how 
how can you be somebody if you hate them? And so how can you tell their story if you don't care about their story? You just see a bad guy, but what's really happening here? So he made me go deeper into investigating. So as I go deeper, I realize like, oh, he's not a bad person. Yeah. He's just hurt by something. And this is his only way of being able to express it because he hasn't been heard. He said, do you feel that in your life? Yeah, I have felt that before. So, and you know, when that gets suppressed, it becomes this, you know what I mean? Yeah. You act out or react to something that's in that moment of you becoming that villain. But once you learn to love what that root is and what that person had that pain, now you can tell their story completely. So. Do you feel like there are such things as good or bad people? Um. Nah, I think there's a because it for everything is just energy, man. It depends yeah. on how you use it. So you can be bad for a long time. Yeah. But if you if you all of a sudden want to switch one day or something happens to you that allows you to switch, then you can become good. So, um, yeah, you we see it every day where we will fall in love with somebody on TV. Yeah. Who we think is a good person, and we find out that they did something awful. Now they become a bad person. Like right, right. What happened to that good person that we loved 20 years ago? You know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean, perfect example of that is, uh, shoot, Kanye West. Yeah. And, yeah. and I say that because uh, a close friend of both of ours thinks Kanye is pure evil. <laughs> but this is the same person that 10, 20 years ago was Jeez. was riding for us. So. Right. Is he completely bad? Because, I mean, at the same time, it's like he may have said and done some bad things, but also look at how he's he's employing people, how he's, you know, giving opportunities to other people, helping people. Like, so it's like a spectrum, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And all you can do is accept it because there's something for you to learn in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's just a part of his journey right now. And yeah. Some of the stuff that you see that you may not like, that doesn't mean throw it away. It just means let me investigate why I don't like this and why it affects me the way it does. Cause bro, that happened to me today. Yeah. Uh, I saw the, the, you know, everybody been sharing this post about uh, this pastor in Atlanta who was speaking to his congregation and telling them that sa uh, saging your house is witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> and for whatever reason, <laughs> you know, I allowed it to affect me a little bit because I know, like, oh, man, why are yeah, you telling yeah. this? <laughs> but then I also had to ask myself, like, B, why, uh, why do you care so much about this? Yeah. They, there are people in the world who are going to believe one thing and spread information that may or may not be accurate. And there are going to be people who are going to do the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, it it's a process, though. Which yeah, is what absolutely. I like about life, man. It, it never gets to a point to where it's just like, oh, I got it. Now I can just chill forever. It's like yeah. something always comes up to challenge you, which then makes you stronger. So, you know, you kind of appreciate that stuff for what it is. And I think when you know that the, the challenges get a little easier to handle, like you when you in, I think initially for me, when it hits, I kind of be a little frazzled. And then once I realize I'm in a challenge, it's like, OK. And then it almost like almost like goes away pretty fast because it's like okay right. now i just got to figure this out and then right. just move on right yeah man but to to be open to that um yeah which yeah. is the thing about the acceptance with other people because a lot of times they're just not open to yeah new information and i guess it's that that part of that psyche that wants to hold on because it feels comfortable you know it's hard to break out of that that mental comfort zone. Yeah. 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 And I, it, it, and it's funny because I think I think we all kind of do it in our own ways. You know, I'm learning, I'm learning more about perspective and just like how sometimes I I looking out I can see that people only see thing one things one way because they're looking at it from their perspective. But like, you know, something that may be challenging to you might be easy to me, and something right. that's easy to me might. I mean, that's, that's challenging to me. It might be easy to you. Right. But being able to see that, you know, it it makes me 
not want to judge your challenge because mm -hmm. it's like you got to go through that right you know right that exactly can't we're trying to judge somebody else's story yeah and they still writing yeah you know what i mean yeah like i, I don't want to try to convince you of something that i think works better for you if that's not what you came here to do you know what I mean? yeah you yeah be writing a story that might inspire us in a different way by the tragedy you go through not that somebody's intentionally going yeah i want to make a tragedy for myself but and you can tell me how you feel about this but part of it being your own free will versus it being influenced so it's already kind of etched in you already and you're playing it out where do you fall on that spectrum so you saying like the things because i'm kind of understanding like the things that we go through are kind of like meant for us to go through almost uh yeah and then just the idea of writing your own story how much of it is you writing it versus your influence to to write what's already inside of you i i, th I think it's kind of being co-written mm -hmm. i do i think uh i it kind of reminds me of those books like as a kid where it's like you get two options of like if you want to if you want to follow this one, you go to this page, or right. if you want to follow this one, go to that page. I think some parts of it's like that. And then, you know, it is some of us that's, that's taking that control. Like, I think when you, when you writing out your goals and when you writing out your aspirations and your dreams, you kind of are writing the story. Yeah. Cause what I'm, what I'm learning is like things that I might've said 10 years ago happening today mm -hmm. and me not remembering that I said that or wrote it out and a friend telling me, Hey, remember when you said this, that, that, and that, like, for example, we did, we did the live episode and we basically talked about therapy mm -hmm. in a bar. And, mm -hmm. uh, my boy James was like, man, remember when you said you wanted to do therapy sessions in a bar? And oh, I was like, that's crazy right. that we did that. So yeah, I, I think we all, yeah, we all are writing the story, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and so with, with us writing our own story, you know, uh, we got the pen in our hand. Yeah. But if somebody else on the outside is trying to tell us what to do, then it's like you're giving them the pen to tell you what your story right. should be. Right, right. <laughs> so. Man, that's, uh, but I feel like, because I agree with you, I for sure mm -hmm. agree with you, but I feel like that also challenges like these these principles of what we're taught and like which one like just just some of like the the christianity principles of like mm -hmm. you know following god and not to say that that i feel like in my path i'm not following god but i also feel like like god is seeing the work that i'm doing and kind of right. clearing the path more so for like if you clear on this and you feeling it i feel like that is god you right, know what i mean exactly yeah yeah but yeah i, I feel like a lot of people kind of just wait as opposed to like you said just writing it because it does it does feel like a lot of uh and it doesn't feel like pressure i think in the past for me it probably did feel mm -hmm. like pressure to know like damn like this is all on me right and now it brings some excitement like to know that this is all on me yeah you know yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it, it starts off as fear yeah because you were taught for so long that it's not that way yeah so it's kind of scary when you're out there by yourself because you know for so long we've been given that protection or that that yeah thing where, yeah somebody's got your back this whole time it's like oh, okay cool if you're telling me what to do all right, right yeah oh, well, good. yeah and then you realize like oh no it's just it's all on you brother right bunch up in that pool deep dive <laughs> 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 oh man uh i saw man i used to get a lot of inspiration from watching the animal planet just to see okay how, like, animals operate in nature man and take the the symbolism from it because i think all the creation is a story yeah so as you watch it you get to see the story of how you can maneuver through life because it's all you know intertwined so i'm watching these birds man and how they would the, the mama bird would take the baby and before they even learn how to fly she just kick them out wow and it's like either you're gonna die or you're gonna figure it out yeah i'm like dang yeah that's some tough love right right there. yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's and that yeah that's that's a real way to look at it yeah Damn. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and nine times out of ten they do you know yeah something you know goes wrong but it's just that point of that the the truth is already in you yeah 
I believe that. Yeah. I do. I feel like I really feel like uh, everything is inside of you, including God. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's funny how we look so external for God, and it's like, what if God placed it like right, right inside of you? Exactly. Exactly. That's the kind of things I'll be thinking about sometimes. Right. Like, you know, I'm looking external, but what if it's all like right there? It's all in the heart, man. Yeah. And that's the whole point of that unconditional love, because you're releasing this. You're releasing God or you're releasing yourself because you're expressing yourself. That's that wave we're on, that energy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, it's, it's like a, everything outside of us is a reflection of yeah. what's going on on the inside. You know? Uh, I was thinking, man, like, first of all, we're small, but we're big at the same time. Yeah. So, like, we're small in the fact that if you go to outer space and look down, like, dang, man, you pretty much just nothing yeah but then when you come back down and look up and see in the middle of the night that in one view you can see a thousand stars that are all millions of miles away from each other that like are massive yeah makes you wonder like dang how big am i to be able to see that much at one time right yeah yeah you know yeah perspective it is yeah it is so uh it's it's like we are experiencing uh God, that's how I look at it. Like, I agree with that too. I do. Yeah, I do. Like, I, I feel like I've, I've kind of abandoned like the, the human characteristics mm. of, of God, because I feel like that, that was the way I was taught, and like being taught to fear God and stuff like that. And honestly, man, my, I would say my first like real, real direct connection to God was the first time I took shrooms, mm. and uh. It just made me feel like like everything that that I was taught about God was just incorrect, and it made me like build a direct connection yeah. to God, and like not feeling like I needed a middleman to communicate. You know, right, right, because it's already there. Yeah, and it's in the book too. It's just the way we were given the book. Yeah, that twisted us from receiving that. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean it's pretty obvious that that was on purpose yeah if you want to keep people programmed or keep people oppressed you would teach them in a way to where they'll do it themselves by the way that they think yeah yeah but man that and so with the symbolism with the shrooms right they they usually grow out of fertilizer yeah which is you know that's the excrement and this is something that i was thinking about even today where how to get to that place of unconditional love is to love the love your shit because that's what you are yeah but out of that shit comes new life you know what i mean right you you took something that gave you a profound experience but you had to dig through something to get it you know what yeah I mean? absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> if, if you, the one who really, you know what I mean, got yeah. it yourself you know what I mean? yeah so that that's that's a story right there yeah you know what i mean so <laughs> hey <laughs> <laughs> I'm always searching for the story, man. Yeah, man. And I noticed that I don't even uh, I, my TV consumption has dwindled because I'm I'm seeing so much story in life. As yeah, I'm around. yeah. And it's been beautiful, man. That's deep, man. So, question that popped in my head as we we were talking, but um, I'm curious to know. I mean, none of us know, but what do you feel like the story is after this human experience? Like, what what's after this? Or do you even think about that? I think about it. I thought about it today, actually. Yeah. Um, I can only I can only base my answer based off of information that i that i perceive or the amount of knowledge i have so far and just looking at how things exist now there's a cycle of yeah. life and death you know um so i think what we're experiencing right now is actually the death i yeah i can see that cuz that's the first thing a- as you come out of the womb that's the number one thing that you're guaranteed that's the first guarantee yeah yeah. You go, welcome to death. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
you got 85 years or whatever. It right. Because <laughs> <laughs> cause just like how that how that poop created the, the new life or the shrooms after it, it's, well, that's the same thing with us, where as we decay or fall apart and we go back into the ground, it happened that a new life will come after that. Yeah. Um, in a in a in a higher form, I guess. Whatever that looks like. I don't know what it looks like. Right, yeah. But no point in uh I try not to dwell on it too much. Yeah, definitely. Because I can't even dwell on the past cuz it don't even exist no more. Right. And it's like yeah. so what is really time then if none of that stuff is there anymore? Like you can't Man. go back <laughs> and get it. <laughs> Man, this this is probably the most present that I felt. Like this year has been like the most present I felt in the year, and it already feels like, like I already feel like we've been through a whole year right. already. Just by just being here, and right. not like you said, not thinking too far about the past, but not thinking too far ahead either, and really like creating what's mm-hmm. ahead, mm-hmm. you know? Exactly through action, right? Because that's naturally what we're gonna do anyway. Yeah, we we got no. It's almost like we can't control ourselves. Yeah. Cause you always going to think. So you always going to think about what can I do next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So after it's just like uh No, you're fine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> we got neighbors walking through. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> it's like this, this r- r- real deal. <laughs> uh, but it's just like, bro, like playing Super Mario. Yeah. You get to level 11 or 12, whatever it is, you win the whole game. What happens? Then you start right Yeah, that's over. true. That's true. Yeah. But, man, it, it's, it's always something I'm going to keep learning about. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Because I feel like there's something in it to even the whole process of being asleep versus being awake. Yeah. Because when, you are, when you're awake in this realm, you're limited. When you go to sleep, you're unlimited. Yeah. And you can create the same thing. Which makes me wonder, well, which one is the real one? The light or the dark? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry if we went too deep today. No, folks. man. That's, that's, that's why you're here, man. I, I told you, I, I knew you was deep from the first time I met you. So I appreciate you bringing that. Um, one thing that I like to have my guests share is one piece of advice with the audience listening um what's one piece of advice that you could share or just a less a lesson that you've learned that you feel like is important for people to know uh to do everything you can to release fear because uh, fear will manifest itself as walls yeah that will uh give you the illusion that it's protection but the reality is it's a hindrance it's just like uh it's almost like a, a overbearing parent where they think what they're doing with all this control over you is protecting you but it's actually hurting you yeah so for that parent or that parent side of yourself who wants to have all this control let that control or that fear go and allow life to just happen yeah yeah. Man, I appreciate you coming on the show. For sure, man. I appreciate you having me, bro. Where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Shamar Sanders, my middle name, last name. Uh, again, that's Shamar Sanders. And I uh, got my podcast, Coffee and Cannabis. Okay. Soon, so be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Uh, and then you can also find me every Sunday at Agora Temple at the Sunday Social, 222. Yes. Man, I appreciate that. For sure, man. Yes, sir. Thank y'all for listening. This is Mike Brown, and this has been The Art of Letting Go. Peace. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of The Art of Letting Go. If you like what you heard, please be sure to subscribe to us wherever you listen to this podcast and leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Let other people know what you think as well. Do you want to get in touch with us? Hit us up on all social media at the Art of Letting Go Podcast. Also, you can send me an email, the Art of Letting Go Podcast at gmail.com, or give us a call. Leave a message. We might play it on the show. 
213-394-2773. Also, if you would like to support The Art of Letting Go, we got some really cool merch, as well as we're now on Patreon. You can find us, The Art of Letting Go Podcast. Subscribe to us. Thank you guys for listening. This is Mike Brown, and this is The Art of Letting Go.